I guess I'll go now. So the most consistent advice that I get about using social media is to treat it as a party, which I hate getting this advice, um, because social media is a party with people screaming out loud about what they care about the most, and that can, that can ruin things. So, um, but that said, one of the things that's important to do in social media is engage people, and so an example of the observer doing that is this. We ran a story called Josh Trevino, Secret Malaysian Man, uh, we did some reprehensible things, I'm sure you've read about them, uh, but it's the headline that I'd really like to focus on. It turns out that uh, Rose Callahan uh, retweeted us and told us what an amazing headline this was, and I decided to reach back out to her. What I found out is that she's a supporter of the Oxford comma, so I made this snarky little comment back. Um, and then we got another response from that, and the result of this is, our blog post got a little bit more traffic, meanwhile we reached out and interacted with the public and they called us. And that's really good, because too often, uh, social media looks more like what's about to show up on the slide, this, um, which is pretty much basically a headline and a link, which, you know, will get the story out, but it's a missed opportunity to build uh, your followership. It's, it's a big missed opportunity to, like, sort of reach out and find other people. So, um, why does it look like that? Well, part of the reason it looks like that is it takes observers because we have 11 people on staff total. I mean, that's it. It's 11 folks. And nobody has the job of doing social media completely. Like, everybody sort of shares that responsibility. I am identified mostly as the guy on Twitter, and you know I do a lot of our social media. And that's important uh, because, and actually I'm gonna pause slightly for a second. That's important, I just totally broke the rules. This is important because um, having your name on, on, on a Twitter account means that you're actually a human being responding. You're not an organization. That's super critically important. Um, so, but at the same time, we've got a network of other people related to the observer, and they all have important things to say, and they all have their own followers. And the presentation. There we go. Um, it's important to capitalize on their followers and their uh, Twitter accounts as well. For example, um, Patrick Michaels is an exceptional journalist when it comes to education. He has a lot of people who follow him specifically for that kind of news. Um, Emily DeBrang covers uh, all, all of our news in Houston, and she's really good at that. And Melissa Del Bosque covers border and immigration reporting. And, that's, and all of their work is fantastic, and they all have their own followers. Um, so what we do is we include their information in our tweets, right? So it'll be like, from at Texas Observer, but include at Patrick Michaels as like part of the tweet, so that people can follow them as they're following the main account. And we do this not only on Twitter, but we do it on Facebook as well. So you know, if we have an event for the Observer, we'll make sure that we mention who the you know keynote presenter is. You know, whether it's Patrick Michaels or whoever it is on staff, we'll put them on that. Uh, on that event page so that people will know and like, we can build a brand around them. Now I want to talk about events for a minute. I believe that the Texas Tribune events page is particularly good. Um, they've obviously spent a lot of time working on it. It has not only events that they have coming up, but it has past events as well. That said, they also spend a lot of time curating um, their Facebook page with all their event information as well. So they've got this great place for people who are coming in the front door, but they also have this, this space on Facebook and on Twitter as well that's reaching out to other people. So I'd like to talk about um, an event that the Texas Observer threw and how we use social media to make some interesting things happen for that event. So every year we have a fundraiser called the Rabble Rouser, which happens at, well, this year it happened at the White Horse on the east side. And the Rabble Rouser is a big fundraising party. Um, there's a band. We had Senator Wendy Davis come out and do a, a particularly interesting cover of the Beverly Hillbillies theme song. Really should have been there for that. Um, we uh, we used Facebook to promote this event, which is sort of like a baseline thing to do, right? But um, there were a couple other things we did as well. We had a silent auction at the event. Um, we also had a, a page on our website, uh, you know, in addition to the Facebook page, which. You know, it's sort of like the bread and butter standard, but it lacks the engagement that social media has. So we had this silent auction, and what we needed to really get it off the ground was some volunteers to come and help us solicit for things to include in this auction. Um, so we actually reached out via, and this is, this is where the scrappy part comes in, we reached out via Facebook and Twitter to actually get volunteers 
to come and do this. And in return, we gave them tickets to the event. So these were like $50 tickets. You came and helped us out for an hour and it was totally good. The other thing we did is we reached out to people who aren't really our demographic. So for example, we were holding this event at the White Horse. So when we tweeted about it, we made sure to mention them. Um, and we got a lot of response from that. They retweeted us. Uh, they you know, sent basically information about our event and about our organization to the people who follow them, which is, is not our demographic at all. So there are a lot of other things that we're doing besides Twitter and Facebook at the Observer that's having like, you know, sort of experimental success. Um, and I'm happy to talk about that during the Q&A. Thanks.